Welcome to this channel, which is a class on research methods by Dr. Lydia Wabugo. This is a class where we discuss everything social science research, from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, the elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. Feel free to ask any question regarding today's lesson on the comment section. Welcome. Welcome to our lesson today, where we shall continue with our discussion on reliability of quantitative instruments. As we discussed reliability in our previous lessons, we said reliability is determined using two methods, and the two are repeated measurements and internal consistency. In lesson 24, we have discussed internal consistency method. We have said that other internal consistency method, we either use split half or alpha coefficients. So we have discussed split half methods in detail and we have even demonstrated how to determine split half using SPSS. Today, we continue with our discussion on internal consistency where we now look at alpha coefficient tests. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the alpha coefficient methods of determining reliability and two, you should be able to demonstrate how to determine alpha coefficient correlation reliability using SPSS. So we are continuing with reliability like we have said, and let us also remind ourselves that we said reliability deals with consistency. The two main methods of determining reliability are repeated measurements and internal consistency. Our discussion is on internal consistency which is the second method. We also said that reliability is determined by correlating two sets of scores. And that is why we have said that you test reliability for variables that have been measured at continuous level. We also said that the acceptable reliability value is 0 0.7 and above. So now we look at the second method at the internal consistency. Do you still remember how we defined internal consistency? We said that internal consistency deals with the degree of homogeneity among items in an instrument and it is based on a single administration of a measure. We also said that we have two types of internal consistency reliability methods, that is split half and alpha coefficients. So we have discussed split half in lesson 24. So we are going to continue with alpha coefficient methods. We have two alpha coefficient methods. The first one, which is very common, is called Cronbach alpha coefficient. This is used with instruments in which there is no right or wrong answer to each item. It is most applicable when we have Likert kind of test. Likert scales measures attitude. So when we have questions that are in Likert type of scale, then the best method that we use to determine reliability is Cronbach alpha coefficient. Now, how do we interpret Cronbach alpha? Any value that is greater than 0 0.9 shows that the internal consistency of the scale is high. A value of between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9 shows internal consistency. 
a value of between 0.6 and 0.7 shows internal consistency which is acceptable. A value of between 0.5 and 0.6 shows internal consistency of the scale is weak. And a value that is less than 0.5 shows no internal consistency. So just like we said when we were discussing general term on reliability, the Kronbert alpha coefficient that is acceptable is the value that will be above 0.7. How do we improve alpha coefficient value? We can improve the value by increasing the sample size, by increasing the number of items in a measuring instrument, and also by piloting. Please note that piloting does not determine reliability. It only improves reliability. So it does not determine reliability, neither does it determine validity. So we will now demonstrate how we determine or we test alpha coefficient reliability using SPSS. This is SPSS data editor or the spreadsheet that shows us questions that have been entered and these questions have been measured at Likert scale. We have earlier said that Kronbert alpha is most appropriate for scale questions. So this view shows a Likert scale and a Likert scale measures agreement or disagreement with statements regarding a phenomena. In the same editor, just like we did when we testing split hub, we shall move to the taskbar, click on analyze, move to scale, click on reliability analysis, and in this case, we shall select alpha as it has been shown. When you click on reliability analysis, another dialog box opens. This shows you the statements that you entered and you can now move them to the space indicated items where analysis takes place. So once we have selected the Likert scale statements to be analyzed or to be determined, we now select Kronbert alpha or it just indicated alpha. Again, a new dialog box opens that allows you to select the statistical tool that calculates Kronbert alpha coefficient. In our case, it is calculated using correlation. So we shall select correlation. Then we click on continue and then OK. So once we click on OK, we again get three output tables. Table 1 shows us the number of Likert statement or items that have been calculated or that have been used to calculate the Kronbert alpha correlation coefficient. In our case, we entered 181 statement. Table 2 shows the Kronbert alpha and in our case, it is plus 0.827. We also have a table three, just like we had at a split half, which shows the inter-item correlation matrix. So we need to ask ourselves if this was the test or the questionnaire that we were taking to our respondents, would we be confident taking the questionnaire to them? And the answer is yes. And we are saying yes because the value that we have arrived at or the Kronbert alpha value is 0 0.8 which is high reliability coefficient. Just like we mentioned with split half, inter-item correlation matrix shows the correlation between items. It determines how item 1 or statement 1 correlates with statement 2, 3, 4 until the last one 
and again you start with item 2 how it correlates with 1 3 4 5 up to the last one then you go to item 3 how it correlates with item 1 2 4 up to the last one the second alpha coefficient which is not commonly used is kuda richardson 20 and 21 this test is applicable or most appropriate for knowledge questions the most frequently applied homogeneity index is kr20 the method is based on the ratio of correct and incorrect answers to the answers given to each item in the measuring instrument kr20 is valid for tests whose items are divided into two like we had in split half if there is calling with different weights among the items in the measuring instrument this method cannot be used remember across reliability we need to have items that are measuring the same construct and they have the same weight and with that we have come to the end of our lesson today today we have discussed the second method of determining internal reliability of quantitative instrument and this method is the alpha coefficient method which consists of Cronbach alpha and Kuda Richardson which is abbreviated as KR20 and 21. We have also demonstrated how to test reliability using SPSS. In our next lesson, we are going to start discussing validity and reliability of qualitative instruments. Thank you for being part of this class today. It is my hope that the class was helpful. Feel free to comment, to like and share this video with your friends. And don't forget to hit the subscription button so that you can attend more lessons like we had today. Until the next lesson where we shall start discussing validity of qualitative instruments, bye for now.